fam, how are you? Um, we're getting back into our chapter story, the plan B. Let's recap. So, Jasmine is always dealing with something. From the time we started reading this chapter, we just know she just, she just been dealing with a lot. And out of everything between Miss Thing who can't change her dress ryan and this baby and work the new job and everything now she have to deal with her ex gary not only is he annoying he's kind of in a way threatening to tell jasmine's business you know what i mean about the pregnancy and who she's pregnant by and the whole boss thing you know so we have to get back in this chapter to see like what is going to happen, what's going on, and is she going to set Gary straight? Because somebody needs to, truly. So, let's get into it. We're on chapter five of this story. So, we're in the same kind of, you know, chapter, episode, like episode, our other story, you know, so... Your ex Gary overheard your spat with Eva about being pregnant with Ryan's baby and is threatening to expose it to your colleagues. That is exactly what I was explaining at the beginning of the story. Come on Gary, be a man, not a baby. You know what? Maybe now would be the perfect time to reveal everything. Gary, don't. Gary's malicious smirk gets even bigger, and he starts to clear his throat as more of your colleagues enter the elevator. Gary, don't, please, because... Jasmine has become a tough girl, you know? She won't let it go, I promise you that. I need to, I, oh, try and negotiate, grab, ah! They don't give me time to think. I, I press grab his arm. I don't know how that's supposed to work. I don't like to be pressured into answering stuff, okay? Give me time to think of my actions because the wrong actions is about to get me screwed up in life. You see what I'm saying? You reach out and grab Gary's forearm, lowering your voice. Gary, don't. Be reasonable. I already tried to talk to you, Jasmine, but you refuse to listen. You start to panic when an idea suddenly strikes you. So apparently, I might have, I might have picked a good enough choice to, you know, subside everything. You see what I'm saying? Even through all the pressure. You start to panic when an idea. Oh, did I read that already? I'm gonna read it again anyway. You start to panic when an idea suddenly strikes you. You are just bluffing. Try harder next time. Gary smirks at you. He believes he has already seen you through. I hate that smile. I should really wipe it off his face. You decide to... I'll... Show him... Hey, I don't have any gems. Why am I giving me no gems? We're gonna talk. You try to convince him to give up... Give give up on you but Gary seems to be not listening at all now as I have something on you I suggest you behave you know me I just want some pocket money I will let you sleep on that honey so you threaten her for her to give you money so you can get your behind out of the situation that you got your behind into and you're going to use her pregnancy to do that you are evil. We are not over, Jasmine. Take this time as a warning. The elevator pings at the next floor and that and with that, Gary storms out, disappeared into a bigger crowd group. He's already like irritating me a little bit, and now I'm not reading properly. You let out a sigh and set in sag back against the elevator wall oh 
Your head becomes dizzy and your vision blurs, causing you to stumble forward. All that stress is not good on the baby, Jasmine. You gotta figure out how you're getting out of this because Gary has something on you now, so it's either give him money to make him go bye-bye or figure out a plan that I wouldn't know what it is. You're about to crumble to the ground when two strong hands catch you. Ryan, there you are. Can we just tell Ryan about this? Maybe he might have a plan. Jasmine, can you hear me? You blink your eyes a few times and your vision starts to clear. Ryan, you're always catching me. I can't hear you. You're always catching me. Yes, because he's always seemed to be there after something is happening. I don't know. What can I say? Beautiful women just faint at the sight of me. No, it's not the time for that, Ryan. Ha! Oh, good. Your sense of humor is intact. He helps you to your feet and waits for you to regain your balance. I'm fine. I think I just need to sit down. Let's head to my office. The last time we were in your office, Ryan, you got a little bit too touchy. You know? The elevator stops at your floor and Ryan leads you through the main room to his office. You look around anxiously. Oh, thank goodness. Everyone must still be at lunch or in a meeting room. If Ryan and I keep getting seen together, people will start to ask questions. They probably would. You reach Ryan's office and he shuts the door behind you as you sink down onto the couch. Let me get you some water. He returns a moment later and sits down beside you, handing you the glass. You sure you're okay? You take a grateful sip of water and nod. I'm, you're fine. Stressful situation is all. Hmm. Look, I don't want to cry, but who was that guy in the elevator? Are you really asking us this question right now? You sigh and place your glass down on the coffee table. He's my ex, Gary. The one you mentioned in LA, the one you didn't trust? Yeah? Okay, so what happened? He was nice in the beginning, you know, funny, charismatic, amazing designer. About a year in, he started asking for money. Didn't think anything of it until I came across open bank statements showing he was bankrupt. Gambling addiction? Yes, I was so naive, Ryan. Even after I confronted him and he told me the truth, I honestly believed he'd pay it all back. Kept telling, kept telling myself he'd change and that everything would get back to normal, but it didn't. One day, I told myself enough, and I refused to give him any more money. That was when he started borrowing from dangerous people and just digging his hole deeper, deeper and deeper into the ground. And now he wants Jasmine involved in his mess. Ryan gives you a soft smile and takes your hand. What did, what you did walking away like that takes guts, Jasmine. You did the right thing. It's difficult with uh, it ah, ah. Let me slow down. It's difficult with addicts because you can't make them change. They need to realize that you have a problem and make those changes themselves. I feel like such an idiot or you gave him too many chances. Because from what I've heard, Jasmine have given him quite a bit of chances, so. But she also should feel like an idiot for giving him them chances. 
I don't know, we just say we gave him so many chances. You're a good person, Jasmine. You just wanted to believe the best in Gary because you loved him. Maybe. You can't beat yourself up. The important thing is that you got away. Ryan takes a deep breath, then takes both your hands in his. My father was an alcoholic. Unfortunately, it's what caused his death. He brought a lot of pain to my family. Ryan, I'm so sorry did he ever hurt you. I'm just gonna, we're gonna say we're so sorry. I can't even imagine what that must have been like. From the outside, many people thought I had it easy because I had been born into privilege. But behind closed doors, things weren't pretty. Ryan's shoulder tense and his eyes glaze over, at, glaze over as he looks off to the side. There's so much I don't know about him. That's the thing about pain. It only makes you stronger. And that's true, Ryan. It does. You're strong, Jasmine. It's one of the first things I notice about you. Something tells me you've experienced your fair share of pain. Mm-hmm. Ryan reaches up and gently cups your cheek in his hand. If there was anything I learned from my father, it was to never let addicts control me or hurt the ones I love. Addictions. Never let addictions control you. Sounds like we have more in common than I thought. Ryan chuckles softly. And I look forward to finding out everything there is to know about you, beautiful. You smile, then grimace as your hands fall to your stomach. What's wrong? There's been so much drama lately and my life is clearly complicated. I just wonder if this is a good environment to bring a child into. Life's always going to be complicated, Jasmine. You got that right. If we have this baby, We'll make it work. We? Yes, we. That is, that is, should you decide to keep it, I'll be here either way. I believe that everything happens for a reason. And I think this baby was, this baby was meant to happen. I need to slow down when I'm reading because my words kind of like to jumble together. Really? Yes, because no matter what, it brought you back into my life. Technically, the job did. <sighs> Symptomatic. Ryan soothingly runs his hand down your back and gives you a gentle rub. Thank you for being here. Why do I get the feeling you're not used to relying on others? Maybe because she hadn't. Maybe because she's been dealing with things all her life, you know? You never know. That's why you would think that? Hmm. I like to think of it as being self-reliant. Well, just know, you can come to me for anything. Ryan continues to run his hand up and down your back, and you melt into his touch. Don't, Ryan. Remember, the last time we was in this office, like I said, you got a little bit too touchy. And you're, you're kind of... Mm-hmm. You get it? Mm hmm I think you're right. Everything happens for a reason. That feels like heaven. This isn't appropriate at the office. We say, we're going to say, I think you're right. Everything happens for a reason. Us meeting again, I think it was meant to be. The hand that was rubbing your back has moved down your side and leg to him of your skirt. Ryan, I said no. In. Oh. Ryan, I know some. I know something I can do to help you relax. We're not taking it. Sorry. Your heart beats a little faster and your skin t tingles as he slides his hand up under your skirt, his fingers, his fingertips dancing on your thigh. We're not, do we have to stop coming to your office? Hmm? 
because you just choose just the worst place to do these things, you know? You, your entire body tenses and the juncture between your thighs pulses painfully. Ryan meets your gaze and gently pats his lap. He clearly wants me to straddle him and take things a little further, but we're not. Come here. There's no denying that I want more and I could really use the relief after the day I've had. Um, Jasmine, not here, please. I want to go away, pull away. We're, we're not doing that. Because the last time, it's a, it's a right place to do these things, okay? But not in the office. When I feel like it's the right time for you guys to love one another, we will do that right timing right place i should really get back to work before people get suspicious okay you start to head toward the door oh before you go i confirmed the prenatal visit for this th this saturday i can pick you up if it helps thanks ryan that sounds great also my mom wants to meet you after the appointment what does she want? Your mom? I didn't realize you had told her. Guess that makes sense. We didn't realize you told her. Because we didn't. We didn't even know she knew. I'm sorry. I should have spoken to you first. But she figured out something was up. It's fine. She would have found out eventually. It's just... I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. You know? I get that, and I promise I won't tell anyone else. Thank you. We say nothing. Would you prefer I cancel? No, it's fine. It's clearly important to you, so. Thank you, Jasmine. Don't be nervous, I'm sure she'll love you. But she can be quite traditional, so maybe wear something semi-formal like she dress this will help get you on her good side we're gonna remember that ryan leans down and brushes his lips against your cheek before you turn and leave his office your stomach in knots and knots to meet his mother what does she want to say to us i get why ryan's mom would want to know about the baby but i i can't forget the way she looked at me that that day what if she thinks I'm not good enough for Ryan, no matter what I do? Well, there goes your anxiety. Later that day, you have a meeting with Bill to discuss your designs for the project. So, Jasmine, how are you settling in? Great, thank Great, thanks. Colin and the guys are very friendly. Mm-hmm. I also understand that there was a miscommunication the other day with the Kinsler project? Should I admit that Eva set me up that way? If there's anything miscommunication, Bill will be aware of this situation. I will. Should we tell him? Should we say it was a simple miscommunication? I don't know, we're just gonna leave it. As bad as I want to say that Eva has set us up. We're just going to say it was a miscommunication. Or should we say that we like to finish things early? Because then if we say that, then it, they would expect me to always finish things early. We're just going to say it's a miscommunication. Yeah, even... Eva and I simply got our wires crossed. It's no big deal. Well, I appreciate you getting the work done so quickly. Although, it must have cost you a good night's sleep. Yes, it did. By the way, I take a closer look at your portfolio. You have a very unique style. Thank you. I have another project I'd like to entrust you with. We're renovating the office building for TV, TV, TVM, the car company. 
It's a big and important project and I have other architects who want to be in charge of this, but I want to give it to you. What? But I am so new here that other architects have more experience. We're going to say I'm so new here because we're not going to put the other architects over Jasmine because she's really good. So we're just going to say we're still new here. We don't want to feel like we're taking away from the people that's already been here. That doesn't matter. I think you have the talent and the vision that I'm looking for. TVM wants something fresh and distinctive, and I think you'd be the perfect person for the job. Well, thank you, Bill. In that case, I accept. You grin at Bill and try to ignore the doubts that began creeping in. Do not. Don't let the devil get in your head. That's never good. Pray him out. Let's just hope I can juggle all of this. Girl, you got it. You good. The rest of the week goes by quickly, and before you know it, the day of your prenatal scan arrives. With us visiting Ryan's mom after the appointment, maybe I should make an effort. I get the feeling she doesn't like me all that much, despite the fact I'm carrying her son's child. If I wear something nice, this could help her warm up to me. Ryan says she prefers semi-formal wear. Maybe something classic? You flick through your wardrobe until you find the dress you're looking for. What's with the gloves, Jasmine? Do you need those? Well then. <laughs> Oh, I look stylish and sophisticated and it's really comfortable. Plus, I feel way more confident meeting her say for the first time in this. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that these outfits are gonna cost me gems, which I didn't get none, so I'm stuck in the story without gems. So it seems like we might be ending up wearing something that she doesn't want to wear. I have a feeling. This one is also amazing. I'll wear... And they put that other outfit that she didn't like in it. I can't get gems. They always say, come as you are. If you don't like who I am for who I am, then we don't deserve to be in your life. You hear me? This is the same outfit she wore when she gave Jasmine that look. Screw it. If Kersay thinks badly of me, that's her problem. Thank you, Jasmine. Hey, beautiful. Ryan opens the passenger side door for you, and you slip inside as he quickly gets into the driver's seat. Uh, are you ready to go? Ryan looks you up and down with a frown. Crap, maybe I should have made an effort. Meeting his mom does seem like a big deal for Ryan. You notice that Ryan is fidgeting and breathing quickly. Are you that afraid of your mother? Everything's everything okay. You seem nervous. Maybe a little, but I'm ex I'm excited too. I mean, we're going to see the baby today. This is all so new to both of us. Ryan places his hand on your knee and gives it a squeeze. Come on, let's go meet Dr. Harris. Harris sent. At the clinic, it's not long before you you're taken to see Dr. Harrison. You must be Jasmine. You ex you excited to meet your little one? Maybe. We're always excited. Moms are always excited to see their little ones. No matter if it's a pregnancy that kind of happened without them trying. Hey, Dr. Harrison. I'm a little nervous, because she is. I just don't know what to expect. Not to worry, that's all perfectly normal. Why don't you go change into this hospital gown? Then we can perform the ultrasound. You usually don't have to put on a hospital gown to do ultrasound. They usually just make you lift up your shirt, but 
okay, Dr. Harrison. You walked into the attached bathroom and quickly changed into the hospital gown before walking back out. Ready to see our little bean? I've been calling them butterfly for every time I feel a flutter, you know? It's cute. I like it. At Ryan's words and excited facial expression, you can't help but smile back. Okay, I'm ready. You lie back on the hospital bed and Ryan takes your hand. Okay, Jasmine, I'm going to put some gel on your stomach. This will feel a little cold. Oh, I know. I've gotten these stuff done three times. Well, more than three times with, within all, you know, three times. You know what I mean. Oh. You gasp as Dr. Harrison squeezes some gel and places the probe on your belly, slowly moving it around. There they are. That's your baby. Dr. Harrison points to a faint outline on the screen of the life growing inside of you. What are you doing? Oh, you're seeing the baby. Tears prick your eyes and you your lip quivers. Hey there, little one. Wow, they're so tiny. Judging by your patient form, your patient forms and what I can see, I'd say your due date will be around March 24th next year. Hey, sounds good. That seems so far away. Uh, yeah, Jasmine, you need nine months for that baby to cook. Not that kind of cook, not literally cook. You know what I mean. Oh, it'll creep up on you quicker than you think. Let's take a listen to the baby's heart. Dr. Harrison presses a button and the sound of a heartbeat fills the room. Wow. Ryan gives your hand a squeeze and you turn your head to look up into his eyes. What are you thinking? This just feels so real now, you know? Yeah. It's gonna be even more real when that baby comes out of her. And then you won't be able to sleep and the baby's gonna constantly be crying. Yeah, that sort of stuff. We're actually seeing our little butterfly and hearing his or her heartbeat. Ryan looks so happy. I should be able to let you know the gender. Of, I should be able to let you know the gender of the baby right now, too, if you like. Ryan looks down at you, his eyes shining with excitement. Do you want to check, Jasmine? I'm dying to know, but it's up to you. But isn't it still too early? This ultrasound is one of the best one on the market. We can tell the gender as early as 10 weeks now. It will be really nice to know the gender of the baby and start picturing what they would look like. Jasmine, I want to... Why are y'all doing that to me? And y'all know I did not get no gym foods for this chapter. Bro, bro, bro. <sighs> I want to know the gender. Okay, we'll find out later. Sorry, guys. I'll just... I'm just not ready yet. Ryan's face falls in disappointment, but he nods. I'm sorry, Ryan. I I'm truly sorry. Okay, never mind. So, everything looks good and your baby appears to be completely healthy and this is for you. Dr. Harrison hands you a card. You open it to see a black and white photo of the ultrasound. Take a look at the photo. Thank you. Oh, before you leave, we'll need to draw some blood and run some tests. Sounds good. That's if Jasmine is not afraid of needles, you know. After the blood test, you sit on a chair in the cor corridor waiting for the nurse to come back. You okay? You take a deep breath and shift on your chair so you face Ryan. Yeah, the visit just given me a lot to think about. Seeing the baby and hearing the heartbeat 
like this is really happening i'm growing new life inside of me right a life we made together and i'm thinking that perhaps it really is fate and this is what was always supposed to happen it sounds like you're you've made a decision she she gonna make a decision either way Ryan because I'm not letting her get rid of this baby she's gonna have it because I say so you take another deep breath and nod as you meet Ryan's gaze Ryan I want to have the baby thank you you better say that because me and you we're gonna have to fight if you said otherwise yes Ryan leaps up and pulls you up into his arms you giggle as he spins you around before placing you carefully down thank you for remembering that she's pregnant i know it won't be easy but whatever challenges this pregnancy brings i'll handle it i'll handle it all of it you're not alone in this beautiful i'll be right by your side every step of the way you got that a tear drops from your eye as you swallow the lump in your throat I think you'll make a great dad. We'll understand if you change your mind. Nope. We think he's going to be a great dad. You serious? Deadly. You've been so patient and understanding through this whole thing. I know it came as a shock. It did, but I prepared to do whatever it takes for you and the baby. Ryan gently cups your cheek and rubs his thumb across your cheek your cheekbone and not just because it's the right thing to do but also because it's what I want I want you and our little butterfly so sweet before you can say anything else a nurse approaches you excuse me Miss Davis we got everything we need so you're free to go if there are any issues, we'll contact you. Otherwise, we'll let you know when your test results are ready. Thank you. Time to meet his mom now. Now we'll see what happens now. How are you feeling? Um, like a weight's been lifted off my chest. Happy that the baby's doing well. Because uh, the weight is not lifted yet Because you didn't meet his mom yet So we're just going to say we're happy that the baby's doing well That's the most important thing I'm starting to feel really excited about this Yeah, me too How do you think your mother will react? I think she'll be happy for us After all, this is her first grandchild Ryan I got the impression your mother doesn't like me very much. What makes you say that? You should have you should have seen the way she looked at me when she came into the office this week. Don't worry, she gives off the impression that she's the ice queen. But buried underneath all that bravado, she's a marshmallow. You arrive outside a fancy, expensive-looking villa. Ryan leads you up to the front door and enters, calling out to his mom. Mom! In the living room. You must be Jasmine. Ah, uh, yeah, you, you, sorry, where's my manners? Yes. Corsair's eyes trail down you as though inspecting an insect. Yikes, if looks could freeze, maybe I should have gone with the red dress. Then at least she might have been pleasant. You and Ryan sit down and he places a comforting hand on your knee. I never knew that you needed to impress someone with what you're wearing. I thought I thought you can just be comfortable with who you are and, and they're supposed to accept you. That's how it's supposed to go. So, how did the appointment go? really well thank you the baby is healthy and you look to ryan who nods then you look back at carse with a smile we're having a girl wait how did you find out i thought we didn't well you 
You found out. Now Ryan's happy now. You see a brief flash of emotion in Carsey's eyes, then she gives you a smile. Wonderful news. Well, I'm glad the child is healthy. It'll need to be, it'll need to be to meet the the will requirements. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, will requirements? You turn to Ryan in confusion. Yeah, because I'm confused too. Right along with Jasmine. Mother, we talked about this. Please, Ryan, the will is more important than Jasmine's feeling. Huh? I wouldn't have brought her here if you wanted to talk about the hair. What the is going on? Let's not be around the bush, Ryan. The girl deserves to know. Jasmine, the only reason you are here is because you are carrying the future hair of Wilson Investment. Are you serious? What? You turn to Ryan and he looks back at you sheepishly. I, uh, did you know about this, Ryan? Hmm? You knew. And you brought me here. Okay. Have you been using me this whole time? Ah! And they stopped us right there, of course. Like I said, since we started the story, like I said, they always seem to want to end the chapter when something good is happening, when something interesting, something juicy is about to happen. And that's, that's the trend, I guess. I guess we're just going to stop when every... So from now on, we know when things are getting juicy, the, the chapter is about to end. Don't take my word on that. I'm just saying that's what they've been doing so far. So apparently they got to see the baby. They got to hear the heartbeat. That's always the most exciting part of being pregnant to be able to see your baby for the first time and then be able to be excited about eventually getting to meet your bundle of joy in person when it's time to come out and apparently like i said jasmine is always going through something something is always happening she's always gotten to deal with something last chapter was gary which don't get me wrong he's not on the back burner we're still dealing with him and we're going to deal with him but now on top of the gary thing now we're dealing with ryan's mother only caring about Jasmine so that they continue their royalty inheritance, whatever they want to do, and take advantage of her baby, which we can't let happen. But obviously we can do nothing but sit back and see what's going to happen. And if Ryan is going to be on our side and not his mom, hopefully that is what he does because you don't want to get on our bad side, Ryan, okay? But if you guys have enjoyed this chapter today, please give this video a like. It will help my channel out so much. Don't forget to subscribe to the Rare Breed fam. I am always wanting you guys to join this family because we're family. We're family now. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you won't miss another juicy video.